What if Naruto was Sun's heir? Death's Guardian, A Hero's Peril Season 2 Part 4 Reading Sun's Heir, Death's Guardian 2, A Hero's Peril by Engineer Forever Disclaimer I don't own Naruto or Percy Jackson and the Olympians. Chapter 4 Inches This Isn't Over, Namikaze, snarled Kiba as he, a whimpering and muzzled Akamaru as well as a frowning Shikamaru were marched into the camp. Along with the bronze chains, chakra restraining tags were placed along their body, a good-sized amount of tags were given to small squads sent to retrieve Choji alive under Jason's order. Listen to the whiner, Ares jeered. He crossed his arms with a grunt, prisoners don't have the right to backtalk. It's Uzumaki, Naruto corrected as he shoved the bound Kiba forward, now keep moving kibble breath. The members of the fifth cohort who had been around when Naruto was at Jupiter five years ago were all delighted to see their former member, including the hyperactive Kool-Aid addict that was their senior centurion, Dakota. Jason let out a small laugh at his friend. Percy smiled along with him and the rest of the Roman demigods. Though, Dakota was saddened to learn it was one of his kin that had threatened the camp. He had personally volunteered to go and retrieve Choji from where he had landed. True. It would be something a legionnaire would do, said the praetor as he nodded. At the sound of armor clanking upon becoming straight and disciplined, Naruto turned to see more familiar faces, one in particular causing his face to split into a wide grin. And the protagonist and love interest meet once more, Aphrodite smiled. Talia frowned a bit, not liking where this was going. Ray Chan, he exclaimed joyfully, abandoning his post in escorting the new prisoners to greet the girl. There's that pet name, said Piper with a smile, glad her other didn't have to deal with Reyna liking Jason. Quiet, Talia told her with a frown. Someone seems upset. Shut it lover girl. Scowls from the other ready cohorts showed their disapproval at the informal greeting. Jason sighed, definitely the carefree type, he said, but there was a touch of amusement in his tone. While others, mostly those from the fifth, fought back laughter at the normally stoic girl giving a small smile to the blonde. I think an angel just got its wings, Leo said, snickering. True, the thunder boy said with a quirked lip of his own. She is very formal. Naruto Uzumaki, she greeted before clearing her throat and giving him an expectant look. Jason slipped over to her side, his smile dimming to a serious brood that looked almost forced. Meh, it becomes easy after time, said Jason with a small shrug. I could not deal with that, said Percy, his head shaking in disagreement. Naruto sheepishly chuckled before standing at attention, crossing his right arm over his chest with a fist on his left pectoral. He bowed forward slightly as he spoke, Praetors of Camp Jupiter, thank you for the timely assist in housing my company. Rise and be welcomed, Jason and Reyna said together. Is it always so formal? Talia asked. Jason nodded, making his sister blanch. Naruto gave them another smile before his eyes landed on Talia, who was staring at the other blonde in the small group. Here it comes, Talia said, a stoic look upon her visage, getting everyone to pay full attention to the coming scene. Taking a deep breath, Naruto then said, Reina, if you don't mind, I need to borrow Jason for a little bit. I suppose I can allow it, Reyna replied with a hint of disappointment. Yeah, real disappointed I bet, Piper whispered with a roll of her eyes, she was rooting for other Talia all the way. I'll make sure the prisoners are properly secured. Alive as well, Jason said with a frown, I still don't understand your reasoning, Naruto. I'll explain it later, the older blonde said as Reyna left to ensure the prisoners would be properly taken care of, short of death. Naruto looked at other members of the Legion, before looking back to Jason and asking, think you can get them to leave us alone for like, five, ten minutes. I am a Praetor, Jason reminded the blonde. Nice cape Superman, Leo said with his thumbs up, making his buddy laugh a little. PSH, since when? Jokingly replied the older teen. Jason rolled his eyes before issuing an order to return to camp, while Naruto went to Talia and Piper. Naruto. I. Is. Is that. Talia was at a loss for words as she watched the blonde teen issue commands. Talia gripped Jason's hand tightly and he gave the same grip back. Above her the sky darkened slowly. 
Zeus frowned slightly, the emotional turmoil of his children always brought out the worse of the sky and it both delighted and saddened him at the long-awaited reunion. Perhaps, it was even more proper than the one his children here had. It is, confirmed the older blonde before he stepped to the side as Jason returned, Jason Grace, creator of Camp Jupiter. Meet my companions, first, Piper McLean. So, love at first sight? Their fiery friend asked, getting both to blush lightly, but Piper was smiling brightly despite it. Hello, Jason greeted with an offered hand and a smile. As Piper took his hand, Jason stared into her kaleidoscopic eyes in awe for a brief moment, snapping out of it when she spoke. Oh he likes, the love goddess gushed, getting her daughter to silently cheer for her other. Jason smiled as well, wondering how they would get together without Hera interfering. Nice to meet you, Piper returned with her own grin before Naruto cleared his throat. The two younger teens released each other's hands and looked to the blonde. Naruto then looked to the raven-haired girl, her blue eyes misting slightly and biting her lip like she wanted to keep from crying. The Grace siblings moved closer together, but Talia could truly relate to her other right now. While she didn't cry, but with a meeting like this, how could her other not? Jason followed Naruto gaze and when his eyes locked with the older girls, he felt something akin to familiarity. As a tear rolled down the raven-haired girl's cheek, Jason felt the urge to make her smile as the clouds gathered overhead. Ah, cooed the women and girls, making Jason blush as Talia smiled to her brother softly. Jason, I promised you a long time ago that I would reunite you with your sister, Naruto began, moving to stand behind Jason. He did, the demigod said in surprise. Well, he did know Talia and then Jason, no doubt mentioning her to him I bet, Hermes said with a nod. Very possible, Artemis nodded in agreement, even though Talia was not her hunter in that dimension, she was still happy she reunited with her brother in better circumstances than the last. And looking at the girl as rain began to fall, think that's happy rain. Percy asked, shut it fish boy, Jason, meet Talia Grace, the daughter of Zeus. Talia Chan, say hello to your little brother, Jason Grace, the son of Jupiter. Much better intro than ours, Talia mumbled, her brother hearing her as he felt her grip tighten. Yeah, he told her soothingly, but so worth it either way. Talia just nodded. Jason and Talia stared at each other for a moment before one of them moved. Jason nearly fell over when Talia bowled into him, wrapping her arms around him tightly, and tears falling down her cheeks. You go girl, Talia whispered, a sad smile on her face as she felt jealous that her other met her lost sibling so early, but snuffed out the feeling. This was a good thing, no other way about it. Jason failed to speak as Talia cried while hugging him and repeated two words, you're real. That I am, Jason smiled softly. Why yeah, Jason finally managed to say as he hugged her back, tears of his own starting to form as he choked out, I I'm real. Ah, I've never seen you cry before. Piper teased her now pink-cheeked boyfriend. Very manly. Thanks Pipes. Hey, Naruto and Piper watched the two siblings interact, the younger demigoddess moving to stand to the blonde's side in an effort to become shielded from falling water. Nice evasive maneuvers Piper, Leo smirked. I try. She looked up at the older teen, nudging him in the side and getting his attention, did you really promise him to reunite him with his sister? Naruto didn't reply for a moment, his smile dying and his eyes becoming sad, yeah. Oh it is coming soon, I can taste it. Oh by order, shut up for once Aphrodite, the mood goddess bemoaned, it was a touching moment and now she was ruining it. Wow. You should work for Hallmark, Piper commented with a small smile. Nice one Piper, Apollo said with two thumbs up, getting a smirk from the child of love. Naruto's mouth twitched upwards at the joke. Unnoticed in the rain, his sunny sky blue eyes remained a depressed shade of blue as he watched the two children of the woman named Grace reunite. Talia's closed eyes opened once more and locked with her boyfriends through the rain. And here it is, Talia whispered both slightly hoping her other let the blonde have it, but also stay with him since he was good for her. She knew that, very much so. A second passed and Naruto prepared himself as he saw the connection start to be made. Her brow furrowed in confusion before narrowing in anger. Forcing herself out of Jason's grasp, 
Talia pushed past with a glare meeting Naruto's eyes. You son of a bitch, she hissed as she approached him. Hey, Apollo said in a stern tone. Hey, Talia returned back, I'm pissed, I'm entitled to say anything right now. She argued sternly, getting a light glare from her archery half-brother. There was a boom of thunder and Talia gave her boyfriend an accusing finger, you knew. You knew and you didn't tell me. Talia mumbled out a jerk, feeling upset along with her other at the boy she seemed to love and trust. She blinked, her cheeks flushing as she corrected herself, the boy her other seemed to love and trust. Naruto said nothing, his sad smile matching the emotions in his eyes. Talia continued to glare at him before storming off in the other direction without another word being said. Doesn't she normally hit him? Nico asked in a stage whisper, getting nods all around except a glare from Talia. Jason found himself once more searching for words, looking between his leaving sister and his friend. Naruto nodded once, a silent instruction sending the younger blonde after his furious older sister. W what just happened? Piper asked, looking up at Naruto, is, is she mad at you? No Piper, what gave it away? The hunter asked sourly. Well excuse me for just knowing you for a day, the child of love said with a roll of her eyes. Yeah, Naruto sighed out, wiping water from his eyes, furious if I'm reading the wind speed right. It's how we measure your mood all the time, Hades told his youngest brother, getting rumbling glare from the king. And that just proves it, Poseidon added as the winds outside Olympus sped up. Zeus just grumbled, huffing with crossed arms. But. Dot she didn't hit you. Piper agrees with me, shut up corpse breath. Nope, doesn't she normally. See, violence is a staple for you. Nico mocked his cousin. Oh I swear, D'Angelo. Let's just listen to the story. Percy interjected. Yep, is that bad, for you? No. Naruto left the question directed towards himself be unanswered and after a moment he turned towards Camp Jupiter. Come on. Let's go talk to Ray chan Ray chan What? Is she an ex-girlfriend or something? Piper asked making note of the suffix he used. Ah, that inner love sense is tingling already. Aphrodite cooed as Piper blanched at the thought. Nope, Naruto said as they walked away from the coming storm. Talia, Talia, wait up, Jason called out to his still storming away sister, clouds gathering above her as she marched. Geez, don't poke the growling tiger Jason, Leo whispered, getting Talia to frown at the elf boy. No comments matchstick. Fine, sorry, the pyro said with not much sorry in his tone. He groaned before shooting ahead in a burst of speed, stopping in front of her as he doubles over and pants, just, just give me a second. Recovering his breath from the forced application of the wind rather than the proper method he had been using. So a wind speed boost, nice, Talia complimented, never thinking of that. Well, she never really used her wind before, so she might never to be honest. But who knows what the future holds? Jason asked as he stood upright, what did Naruto do? Uh, opened that can of worms, big time, Hermes winced. What did he do? He, he fucking lied to my face. Talia had tears of rage, depression and joy being held back by Shearwool, he knew you were alive and kept me in the dark. Me, I thought we were past all that, but he is still keeping secrets from me. He still is is, said Talia pointing out that phrase. Oh, stop being so negative about it. Aphrodite huffed, secrets make a couple interesting. The hunter huffed back, well, I'd rather had not have my other deal with that. So, everyone's got secrets, Jason replied in confusion. You don't keep your girlfriend's brother still being alive a secret, Jason. Talia shouted, causing a bolt of lightning to crash down nearby. The hunter girl nodded to this, very eagerly in fact. Naruto messed up, big time. Jason's mouth moved but no words came out. Finally, he managed a surprised, gee girlfriend. Didn't see that one coming, did he? Sure didn't. Nico nodded to the Latino boy. Oh shut it, Jason frowned at them, getting the two to snicker. Not for much longer, exploded the raven-haired demigoddess along with a boom of thunder. Say it isn't so, the Lady of Doves bemoaned at the loss of such a cute couple. 
Well, I, I don't know how to reply to that, admitted the Preter, but this can't be how you want to end it. Jason playing Dr. Love, Leo asked with a blink. I can be understanding about these things, said, Doctor, pointed out with a stern look. He wasn't romantically naive. That was Percy. You'd be surprised, retorted to Leah as the rain started to pour down harshly, reflecting her emotions. Jason was starting to have trouble determining which droplets were tears and which were from the sky. All the rain, Talia swiftly said. No, those look like some tears of your own. Screw off wethead, there has to be a reason why he kept it from you. Jason said, nearly shouting, as the wind picked up. He could suppose this was why Lupa would send him outside when he would have temper tantrums. Jason, Piper said in surprise, Leo blinked temper tantrums. That just didn't fit together at all. The blonde in question huffed. What? He was a little kid once, it happened. I had a right to know that my little brother was still alive. You did, agreed the younger Grace, you had every right to know. But, but, Naruto had a reason, he always has a reason for what he does. Wow, Annabeth whistled out. You're defending him so readily. She wondered what relationship Jason had with the older blonde. I know, the other blonde demigod nodding to her. So what? My feelings don't matter. Talia raged, just his bullshit, reason. Exactly. The lightning girl nodded to her other. He brought you along when he knew he'd end up here, right? Jason asked, making Talia blink. He brings up an excellent point. Jason told his sister, he knew this would happen, yet still did it. That gave Talia some pause. What does that tell you? He promised to reunite me with my sister and look what he did. Sure it took some time, but kept his promise to me. And I'm sure my other is grateful. Jason whispered to his sister, who looked at him, still frowning a bit, but nodding to him also in understanding. I still had a right to know. Talia argued, maybe something was keeping him from telling you. Jason retorted. Us. Zeus spoke getting most of the gods to nod with him. There was a reason why the Greeks and Romans were separated. Naruto wouldn't keep this from you unless something made him do so. Give him a chance to explain himself and he will. What do you know? The older sister demanded. I know that he missed you. Jason said, making her stare at him in disbelief. Go Jason. Aphrodite cheered. Save the love. Save it. The blonde pressed on. Yeah. All he talked about was you and his sister. She's around my age apparently and her name was, Annabelle. Hey, Annabelle. Cried out with a frown. What? He said it right, Dionysus said with a sip of his diet coke. Athena sent her once demigod half-brother a glare. It did little towards the plump god. Annabeth. Talia corrected getting Jason to nod. Thank you Talia, no problem. Okay, Annabeth, amended the blonde the point is he wouldn't shut up about you. That must have been awkward, Percy said, getting the blonde Roman to glare at him. Don't push it, he told his Greek friend. He was always smiling when he talked about you too. The females besides a pink-cheeked Talia cooed at that, while Jason frowned a little, feeling protective of his sister all of a sudden. I was also curious what you were like, so he told me things. Like how you much you love to practice with your control over lightning, especially on him since he doesn't like it. So Talia, Annabeth giggled, getting a smirk from her friend. Talia smirked as she recalled the small shocks she used to give the blonde as they traveled. The way he would yelp and jump behind Annabeth. And an adorable human shield you must have been. Shut up. Annabeth pouted with pink cheeks to the hunter. While Luke would tease the older boy who then retaliate with a wedgie or noogie or something along those lines. Hermes smiled faintly at that. Must have been a sight. And then the way you'd. Dot you two would. Well, talk, Jason said while shuffling where he stood as the rain slowed. Really, really awkward. Jason just sent the smiling Percy a darker look than before. The sea child was still smirking sadly. The way you'd speculate over what would come after you next. When he talked about you. He just seemed so happy, he spoke with such affection, you know. Talia blinked in wonder at that. She had the beginning and the end of how she knew Naruto, but not much of the middle, something she really wanted to see. 
Dalia's smirk fell into a soft smile. More than once she and Naruto would lie under the stars looking up, wondering how their fathers acted. Not that well, Hera said with a quirked lip. Indeed, Artemis mused with a smile. Both husband and brother huffed with matching pouts. What the safe place for demigods was. Before Grover came in I guess. Annabeth stated softly, remembering those days. Sharing a few nights alone on watch for monsters, the way she'd wake up in his embrace after some long nights. Ooh, ooh, Apollo grinned wolfishly, getting the hunter girl to actually smile at those kind of moments her other got in. More recent events entered her mind, fighting Layden along with Zoe, their dance at Christmas. We danced at Christmas, Talia asked, Aphrodite squealed in delight, how romantic. The more embarrassing conclusions to their training sessions, and some of their date nights. So basically lip-locking, Nico asked bluntly, shut up. Then he'd go on about how you always had this smirk, how your nose scrunched up when you'd get mad, how you woke up more than once lying on his shoulder, Jason rambled before pointing at his now scowling sister, that's the scrunched up, oh. Too much Jason, yeah, the blonde nodded to his sister, who in fact had her nose scrunching up. Huh, so it was true. I think I get the point, the slightly embarrassed girl said before looking up at the sky, I hate losing control like that. You just needed to calm down, Jason corrected as he held his hand out. Wind gathered in it and started to form a sphere, once you're calm, you can do anything. Very true, the flying boy smiled. Talia, Percy asked, calm, Nico smirked, ha, ha, Talia laughed dryly at her cousins. Little jerks, he helped you gain control, too, and impressed Talia mused before raising a fist and having lightning spark around it. Lightning's way more fun, though. Very true, the father supported. You can fly with wind, Jason countered with a smirk. Again, true, the Sky Lord nodded. Talia's own grin fell slightly, yeah, flying. What, can't fly yet, Jason started to tease before he remembered something and he winced, right, acrophobia. You know, I've been wondering how is that even possible, I mean our father is. Oh even other Jason is ragging on you with that, Annabeth giggled. Oh be quiet Annie, Talia pouted, or should I tell some spider stories? Shutting up now, shut up, Jason, Talia said with a small frown that could be mistaken for a pout. It was a pout, all her friends said as one, getting the hunter to pout at the betrayal. Jason grinned, you're the daughter of Zeus, but afraid of heights. I will shock you, Talia warned, it wouldn't hurt me. Deadpan the younger Grace, earning a glare from his sister. I'm sorry, for a second I mistook you for the other blonde, Talia snarked. Still pissed about Naruto it seems. Of course I would be. Talia defended her other from the love goddess. The two siblings stood across from one another, eyes narrowed challengingly at the other before they grinned. They hugged again and after a minute, Jason asked in a hopeful tone, so, gonna go forgive Naruto, yet. He really wants you to make up, said Piper with a smirk directed at her boyfriend's sister. No, Talia replied with a frown before asking, can we talk about something else? Blunt about it also, Piper said with a frown. She rather liked the couple and hoped it didn't break up. I guess, Jason said in a slightly defeated tone before asking, so, dot how was life as a tree? Wow, subtle, Percy nodded making Jason flush while Talia looked at him in bewilderment. They refused to tell us anything, Reina said with a scowl as she, Naruto and Piper stood outside of a holding cell. Trained soldiers tend to, Naruto was leaning against the side of the bars, glaring into the cell at the meditating Shikamaru. The blonde's eyes narrowed in thought. Do you really have to lock the dog up with a muzzle? Piper asked as she looked at the giant white dog. Normally, no. Naruto said, breaking himself from his musings, but he's learned to speak. One less annoyance. This is why dogs shouldn't talk, Hermes said, ever. What about Lupa? Asked his Roman demigod half-brother. She's a wolf, so it doesn't count. Fuck you, Naruto. Kiba snarled as he glared down at his shackled hands and the tags attached to it. Um, while many may pay to see it, I'm going to have to pass on the request, Naruto replied. Oh poo, Aphrodite pouted. 
It would be spectacular to see how well a lover Naruto was. The other males in the room disagreed, their faces green at the thought. Before returning his gaze to Shikamaru, you can't escape. R. Leaders won't allow it. A girl in shiny armor and another pretty boy. Not a pretty boy, Jason frowned. Piper rolled her eyes, you are very handsome. The golden boy just flushed a little, a pout accompanying his face. He wasn't a pretty boy though. Kiba was cut off by Shikamaru's voice. They're not who he's talking about, replied the meditating teen as his coal eyes looked up and met two sun-filled sapphire orbs, something far more powerful as at play here. Um, yeah, I would think so, Percy nodded, wow, sad day for these mortals. Understatement of the millennia, Naruto mumbled. Looking back to Reina, the blonde said, they're not going to talk. Hum, time to bust out the toolset. Ares grinned wildly. Leo blanched at the phrase. It is so not cool to use things for creation to pull someone's teeth out. How can you be sure? The Praetor asked. The only way that we would get anything is if they told us willingly, replied the blonde before an idea struck him. Looking at Piper, Naruto said, Piper, come here. Smart. Athena smirked. Why be ruthless when you can mind control? Ares grunted in disappoint. Pansy asked blonde, using the cheap way for info. Why? She asked. I got an idea. The blonde replied, ask the mutt what their plan is. What? Both Piper and Reina chorused. Fuck you Naruto. We've been over this, Naruto said to the shinobi before looking back at Piper, in the nicest, sweetest and most polite manner, ask him what their plan is. Show that charm sweetie. The girl's mother smiled brightly. Why should I? Piper inquired as she stepped closer to the cell. Naruto rolled his eyes, because then you would be helpful, I might get an idea as to who your mother is, would you like me to continue? But he already knows. The love child frowned. Yes, but even unaware of it, your charm speak is an excellent tool for interrogation, Athena pointed out, no doubt Naruto wishes to use it for such ends. Huh. Piper, feel like joining the police force. Maybe a district attorney, you'd probably go far as a prosecutor. Leo suggested with an elfish smile. Maybe, the daughter of love said with a ghost of a smile on her face. Fine, agreed the girl before looking at the wild-looking man. Smiling in a sincerely sweet smile. So those sparkling whites, mom. Piper cried out in embarrassment. Piper asked Kiba, what is your plan? Bust out as soon as possible, subdue Naruto and drag his traitorous ass back to Konoha for trial and to retrieve a blood sample so that the Alliance can use his parents' notes in the Fourth Shinobi War, Kiba answered. Not possible, Jason said for the first part. Not going to happen, Apollo chuckled. Wow, ninjas were funny. He has done nothing wrong, and he has a far more important duty. Zeus continued, getting a nod from his eldest brother. Trying to use his blood for some kind of seal lock no doubt, Athena said. But to take him and just use his blood for some pointless little war, Hestia said with a shake of her head, these ninja had little tact whatsoever. Why can they not leave the kind boy alone? Shikamaru looked at him in pure shock while Akamaru growled something in the canine language. Yeah, figured as much, Naruto sighed out while Kiba rubbed his head. Looking at Piper, Naruto grinned. Congrats are in order, your mom is the ultimate manipulator. True, was the united tone of the gods besides said goddess, who puffed up with pride. The lady of doves and the fairest of them all. Hera and Athena scowled at this, but the woman in the dress smiled brightly. First three guesses don't count. As Piper furrowed her brow in confusion, Shikamaru stood and pulled Kiba away from the bars. Glaring at Naruto, the squad leader asked, how did she do that? Genetics, Aphrodite said in a smug tone. Keebs is a pervert, he couldn't resist her girlish charms, Naruto replied as he gently pulled Piper away from the cell. She's more of a tomboy really, shut up Leo. Yes ma'am. And stood in front of her, she might be able to ensnare you, too. Bullshit, snapped Shikamaru, I so could. Piper argued with a frown, she did not like her skills being dismissed like that. What sort of keke Jenke does she have? Who are the people in charge and where the fuck did you get the strength to flip Choji when he was over 100 feet tall? 
He does know he's the prisoner, right? Nico asked in a stage whisper. One would hope he was smart enough to figure that out. Athena mocked the pineapple boy. Honestly, pineapple-shaped hair. What you think I'm just going to tell you? Naruto asked with a smirk, like the old me would've. Like an idiot would. Well here's a newsflash, Shikamaru. There was a squelching sound and Shikamaru's eyes widened before he looked down and saw a kunai piercing his leg. Ares cheered at the brutality. Show him who they be messing with kiddo. Apollo grinned, he always got annoyed from uppity mortals. The dark eyes looked up into the sun-encircled blue ones, Shikamaru's gaze was filled with betrayal and confusion while Naruto's were filled with anger. Another squelch was heard and Shikamaru stumbled back, clutching his leg and gritting his teeth. I'm not the dobi you can push around or poke fun at, just like you're not the same sarcastic lazy son of a bitch you were all those years ago, Naruto informed the man with accusing eyes. Bring in the playground brawls huh? Ares asked. Maybe, Hermes stated, I'll kill you, Naruto. The weak voice of the newest occupant said as members of Jupiter's legion entered. Naruto turned and his gaze softened as the slightly charred body of his childhood friend was carried in. Before he could speak, Reina stopped the entourage and glared down at the wounded man. Be silent, the young warrior scolded, you've shamed both this camp and your ancestry, at least hold the decency not to disgrace yourself further. True, but the guy doesn't even know about his lineage, the praetor said with a frown. Dionysus also had this saddened look on his face, despite the fact that he was Roman, he was still of his blood. So having one attack one of the camps inwardly upset him. He doesn't even know what you're talking about, interjected the blonde demigod as he placed a hand on Choji's head, ignoring the glare he received. Closing his eyes, Naruto softly spoke, Kind father above, show my foe some love, ensure the pain goes away, I will never turn astray. I know you won't. The sun god smiled softly to his kid, he was too good like that. There was a small bright light from where Naruto's hand pressed against Choji's head. Choji felt the pains of his burns dim to nothing, making him look at Naruto questionably. Patting the large man on the head, Naruto said, For burning you alive, I am sorry, Choji. Stabbing someone and flaying someone are two different things. Choji said nothing, falling into a blissful sleep as he was moved into an adjacent cell. Naruto's eyes followed his old friend before looking back to Shikamaru, who was frowning as he tried to figure out what had just happened. Like he could, the medicine god scoffed with a smug look on his face. You can keep plotting all you like, Kanahan, Naruto said with a bit of disgust, I'll be waiting. You can't keep us down here forever, Naruto. Kiba called after the blonde as he and the two girls left the cells, I will get you for this. Naruto. No you won't, deadpan the demigods. When Jason offered to show her around the very different Camp Jupiter, Talia hadn't expected to run into her boyfriend and their younger companion being led around by the other praetor, Reyna. With her armor off and wearing a bright purple tunic, Reyna was a rather beautiful girl of Hispanic descent with hair nearly as dark as Talia's own. Obviously she's checking the competition pinning for her man. Why do you have to speak? Talia bemoaned at the chatty love goddess. Because I can, and I will, was the simple but smirking answer. She stood at Naruto's shoulder, putting her a good few inches shorter than herself and her equally tall and still growing brother. You are a bit of a giant, Jay. Talia teased. The blonde shrugged, can't help genetics. Which is strange since you were always the shortest of us. Poseidon told his brother in a joking manner. HMPH was the only answer Zeus gave. Talia Chan. Naruto greeted with a nod as well as a small smile. Talia nodded curtly to him and Piper before looking expectantly at the other praetor, to which Naruto introduced them, Ray chan this is my girlfriend Talia Grace, Jason's sister and daughter of Zeus. Talia, this is Reyna, daughter of Bologna the Roman war goddess. Athena had contempt written all over her face. Talia noticed that something flashed across Reina's eyes and that the praetor's eyebrows narrowed slightly when Naruto called her his girlfriend, but her face quickly turned into a small smile, Welcome to Camp Jupiter, Talia Grace. And that is only the start, the game is afoot for the affections of one Naruto Uzumaki, the demigod with a god inside his soul. The love goddess cooed with glee.
The lieutenant palmed her face, static coming off her in irritation. Just Talia will do, the raven-haired daughter of Zeus as she returned the smile half-heartedly. It was exactly what she needed right now, a girl with a crush on her idiot. We know how you feel, Annabeth and Piper said in stereo, both smirking at the glaring Talia, most likely deciding which to slap upside the head first for their little comment. And judging on the pleased grin spreading across Naruto's face, he wasn't even aware of it. Ah, the dense type. While sometimes the toughest to get the attention of, they are some of the best out there. The love goddess said, turning to Annabeth, giving the blonde a wink. Annabeth flushed prettily and turned a small gaze to Percy, smiling softly. Fantastic. Addressing said idiot, Talia asked, so who were our followers? Couple of guys from my hometown inviting me to a party, Naruto said. Piper scoffed, more like they were here to drag you to your ordered execution. Wow, blunt much Piper? Hazel asked the love child. Piper flushed, well, I was like, 13, and, um, she stammered for an excuse, sadly she couldn't think of one. Well thanks for having my back, Pipes. Naruto chirped sarcastically. Hey, Piper pouted, only her dad could call her that. And, maybe Jason, but still. As Talia narrowed her eyes on him. In order to appease his girlfriend, Naruto was quick to add, look it's nothing to worry about. I sealed off their chakra and Rei Chan has them all under guard by members of the first cohort, some of the best fighters in the legion. Who did you assign? Jason asked, getting Reyna to look at him. Just Marshall and Douglas, Reyna answered, we already have them locked up and as Naruto said, he sealed away their chakra. Chakra, corrected the blonde. Naruto opened his mouth to continue when another voice spoke up. How dare you show your face here? I wonder who that is. Percy frowned. Well, one person came to mind, damn, not him. Wonderful, just the person I didn't want to see, Naruto snarked before turning to glare at the newcomer. He was a pale skinny teen just about Talia's height, with equally pale blonde hair and crazed blue eyes that were narrowed onto Naruto's form. A white toga hung over a plain blue shirt and jeans. Talia noted that there was a tattoo on his arm, of a liar above the letters SPQR with five lines underneath it. Joy, was the dry chorus of Roman children. Flanking him were two Roman campers with spears at the ready. Jason palmed his face. Damn that fool and his little flunkies, damn them to the pits. You, you and your, your Greek ideology, the teen said, not to mention bringing enemies into the camp. Apprehend them. He isn't that stupid to make orders with both Reyna and you there, is he? Piper asked her boyfriend, who nodded. Octavian is the stupid type in certain things, like him believing he is in charge being one of them. Lower your weapons. Jason ordered the two before glaring at the newcomer, and you stay out of this, Octavian. See, fool needs to be put in his place from time to time. The golden boy said firmly. Your compassion blinds you, Jason, the teen, Octavian, accused, you acquaint yourself with the enemy. Oh just shut up you skinny little brat, the child of Jupiter grunted out with a frown adoring his scarred lip. Oh shove it up your ass, Octi, Naruto sneered. Why don't you go play with your stuffed animals? Burn, the Romans mocked with glee. You dare insult the auger of Jupiter? Octavian asked. He's really not, Apollo said. He isn't, Hazel asked in surprise. Apollo shook his head. No doubt Naruto will tell the little poser what he really is, or trying to hide the fact of what he really is. Sweet. Oh that is bull, shit. Helios raged. This little twat wouldn't know the difference between a fortune cookie and a prophecy if it slapped him in the face. I love Saul, Jason said. Agreed, Hazel and Frank said with nods. Helios, Apollo said to the Romans, a frown on his face. Augur my ass, Naruto snapped, taking a step towards Octavian as Helios' feelings on the matter influenced him, you're nothing more than a Haruspex. There you go. The auger looked like an apple he was so red, you son of a. Finish that sentence and even the gods won't save you from my wrath, Octavian. Naruto warned the teen with murder in his eyes. You tell him, Percy frowned, if anyone ever said that about his mom, well, he'd probably be looking like Naruto right now. 
If there was one thing Naruto disliked above all else in this camp it was the great times however many generations nephew that stood before him. The two blonde descendants of Apollo held murderous gazes while Octavians, guards, nervously looked between the two. All right, that's enough, Reina announced, stepping between the two with a scowl set on her face. She turned to Naruto first, as much as it pains me to admit it, Octavian has a point. You are a guest, do not show hostility to my people. Ah, she had to save the moron from getting his ass kicked. Piper said with a pout, and Jason chuckled at her words. Reina then turned to Octavian, and you, Octavian, have no right in choosing who is and isn't allowed in our camp. Now return to your duties or I will have you arrested for attacking a foreign diplomat. You don't have the right, Octavian began, only for Jason to step forward. Bad move, idiot, Leo snickered, you not only threatened our guests, Octavian, but my sister as well. Jason snarled, who happens to also be the daughter of Zeus? What does that tell you? To shut your little mouth, Hazel smiled viciously at the asshole being put in his place. Talia shoved Jason lightly with a smile on her face, him giving one right back, a bright one adoring his own face. Octavian promptly shut up, looking as though he just swallowed something sour, sending another sneering glare to Naruto. The look was returned with one of restrained anger, part of it was influenced by Helio's opinion and of Naruto's own dislike for the team. Octavian held his gaze for a moment longer before retreating. Naruto's eyes narrowed and he grumbled, how the fuck did that come from my dad? Not my fault. Apollo announced to the eyes of the Roman demigods and Percy that were on him. Don't let him get to you, Reina said to the blonde, placing a hand on his arm, he was trying to get you to react. Ah, small physical contact to gain attention and show affections. Subtle, but good in the long run, the love goddess said with a smirk. Yeah and he almost got his wish, the older demigod muttered angrily. He turned around and walked away interlocking his hands behind his head as he did, well, we gonna get some food soon. I thought you guys would have added a restaurant while I was gone. Jason mused about that, if they only did. Meals at Camp Half-Blood were much more, well, the meals were homier than back at Camp Jupiter if the son of the sky was perfectly honest. You're a riot, Naruto, Jason replied as his eyes rolled. As Reina and Piper followed after the son of Apollo, he nudged Talia and asked, you wanna go with them? We might not have a restaurant but we've got some pretty good food at the barracks. This place sounds more like a boot camp than a summer camp, Talia murmured. Well, yeah, pretty much, Frank said. Talia still frowned a bit that her little brother grew up like some military brat. He should have grown up with a bit more than just training this and regulations that, but what's done is done. With her eyes narrowed as she watched Reina gently touch Naruto's arm to gain his attention. Mad as she might be at her boyfriend, she wasn't about to let some crushing girl try to take him away. I hear you, sister. Oh be quiet McLean. Talia hissed with pink cheeks, but Piper just stuck out her tongue at the hunter. Looking at her brother and forcing down her anger, Talia gave him a small smile, sure. Later that evening, Shikamaru found himself staring up at the roof of his cell. Kiba had tired himself out trying to force one of their armored guards to release him under death threats. Wow, these guys really are stupid. Hazel frowned, maybe it was better that Naruto left these people. It was where he truly belonged after all. The guards merely spoke in another language before laughing as their relief came in. Upon being asked what language they were speaking, he was told nothing. Choji floated in and out of consciousness. Whatever Naruto did, he made it possible for Choji to slowly recover, if what one of their guards said in English was anything to go by. It made the heir to the Nara clan think about what Naruto had said to him. You can't take me home, I am home. You tell them kiddo, you can't take me home, I am home. Naruto's whispered words echoed in the air to the Nara clan's head as he sat in the cell, also wondering how he could escape. Had the girl wearing gold armor not given the guards instructions to search them for weapons or anything else for that matter, they could have been out of the cell by now. Well, we're not that stupid. Honestly, just because we're kids, Jason frowned at these ninjas' attitudes. 
He was liking them less and less. How could he say that? Shikamaru returned to the other train of thought as he lifted his arms and looked at the seals painted on them. Naruto had added them in when he learned the cuffs were coming off. Whatever had happened over the past seven years, it had changed the knuckleheaded dunce of the school he once knew to a smarter and far more cunning warrior. They seem to enjoy to have your son as their fool, Athena told her brother, who did not look pleased about such a thing, not at all. For better or worse, the man asked himself, better, was the united statement. He looked at the bars when that new language was barked out. The two guards exchanged a look before leaving the room, their armor clanking upon their movement. The door slammed shut and Shikamaru closed his eyes, thinking of ways to make use of his absent guards. You are the intruders then, a new voice asked in English, making Shikamaru's eyes snap open. Standing before him was a skinny blonde teen wearing a white sheet over a blue shirt and pants. It's a toga you uncultured savage, Mr. D sniffed in distaste. Honestly, talk about clueless. The teen had eyes similarly blue to Naruto's, although lacking the sun that seemed to encircle his one-time friend's pupil. Who are you? Shikamaru returned with suspicion. I am the Augur of Camp Jupiter, Legacy of Apollo, Octavian, the teen introduced himself with a scowl, you are an enemy bested by the exile, are you not? Oh, he had better not, Jason seethed, how dare that that whelp even think of doing what the blonde son of Jupiter just knew what the legacy was planning. Exile? inquired the commander with furrowed brows. Naruto, Octavian hissed with distaste. Shikamaru's eyes narrowed before he answered, yes. You are here for him, Octavian asked, to kill him. You can hear how hopeful he is in that statement. Hazel frowned. No, the Jonin replied with a frown, to return him home. Octavian pursed his lips in thought, and now he's upset. Frank frowned along with his girlfriend. Turning and walking to the other side of the room before he returned to the bars of the cell, you mean us no harm. When you clearly have the giants on your side, are you a fool or are you sincerely not interested in our camp? We are here with orders to return Naruto to his home, Shikamaru answered, by any means necessary. Yes, against the boy's free will, Demeter said with distaste, giving her brother a small pointed look that he ignored. If I were to free you, Octavian slowly began, hypothetically, of course. Oh, of course, you little conniving piece of, Jason, Harris said crisply giving her champion a look, getting the boy to stop his rant before it could begin. She could understand the boy's anger. Plus, young Naruto was an interest to her other and herself and betrayal was something she despised. Mainly because her husband did so every time he had a demigod. Would you, remove him without harming any of our campers? At least he somewhat cares, Percy scoffed, asshole. No excuse. Jason gritted out, a fire in his eyes. I can make no promises, but any attack on your campers would be only retaliation, Shikamaru replied. He paused before asking, tell me, who is Apollo? Why me, of course. Apollo pointed to himself, sun god, music god, medicine god, prophecy god, a whole list of stuff since, well, I am just that awesome. I also have a super ninja kid, but that is neither here nor there. Blasphemous words leave your mouth hissed the augur, Apollo is my ancestor, god of the sun and prophecies. A god, you expect me to believe you are the descendant of a god? Shikamaru asked with a disbelieving smirk. Apollo's smile turned into a thin line. Oh, stupid mortal be trippin' balls now. The other gods knew it, these ninja didn't know about them, well, let's see what happens when they disrespect them, shall we? What's next, Naruto's allies are too. Duh and he is a demigod with a god titan in his soul, what say you stupid mortal twit? Apollo mocked, officially not liking pineapple boy. They are Greek children, Octavian sneered, but still also children of the gods. You can't seriously believe this, the man replied, there's no evidence to prove. Again, it's like Peter all over. Dionysus sighed in distaste, Percy frowned at the wine god's words. What, it is hard to take in at first. Another word from your mouth and I will rethink my offer to help you. Octavian snapped. The only good you got, Octi. The sun god nodded, shut that ninja up, 
you whiny little traitorous bastard. Shikamaru frowned but closed his mouth. If this kid wanted to think he was a child of a god then fine by him. The delusions would only turn him homicidal in the end. Well, he is a prophecy giver. The sun god mused. Hermes frowned at him for that, remembering May. Poseidon also frowned, remembering his blind prophet of a son. A weed whacker, honestly. All he needed to do was earn the blonde's trust to get himself and his team out, and if that meant indulging in these, gods, then so be it. The gods' frowns deepened a bit, yeah, ninjas, so on their shit lists in the coming days. They could just feel it. I see you understand, Octavian said with a smirk. He reached into his sheet and withdrew a key, dropping it just outside of the bars. The otter turned to leave, saying in a feigned concern, Oh woe is me, I seem to have lost my key. I thought you were the god of actors bro, Hermes asked, amusement tickling his voice, that was pathetic for a legacy of yours. Oh, shut it, you internet troll. The god of the sun scowled with crossed arms. Shikamaru rolled his eyes and waited for the team to leave the room before reaching out and grabbing the key. He returned to his corner of the cell, looking at the still snoring Kiba and Akamaru before thinking of how to complete his mission. Subduing the guards would be simple, it would be getting Choji up and ready to go after Naruto once again that would be hard. We will move in an hour, Shikamaru decided. And you'll get sent to the pound, again. Ares gave a throaty chuckle at the dog joke getting groans from the other gods. As he sat atop the roof of the barracks of the fifth cohort, Naruto flipped the small medallion his father had given him up into the air, catching it in his hand before doing the act once again. Talia had returned it after dinner, telling him that she didn't need any more of his help, before leaving him stunned and saddened. Wait, that isn't a sign of breaking up, the love goddess exclaimed. Talia frowned, it sounded like one to her but decided to see how it goes. She was still mad at him for not telling her about Jason. Talia was actually very mad at him if all her jibes at him during dinner meant anything. Reminds me of some couple, Hades said, a look to his married siblings. They both gave him a look in turn for the comment. I should have told her sooner. Naruto berated himself with a frown as he flipped the coin, screw Raijiji's orders. Since when do I listen to authority? You tell them son, be quiet, Apollo, okay dad, the sun god said like a kid, crossing his arms with a pout. Since authority had taken control of your life, Helios said, giving his input. Shut up, Helios, thought the guardian with a scowl. Looking up at the moon, Naruto continued to think about how this quest was becoming worse. If only he could just know, he couldn't beat the fates. He tried that once to interfere in another's fate by attempting to change his own. It didn't end well. Talia frowned, the boy had died for her, because of her. Deep down she felt pain in her heart, no doubt her other felt that feeling all the way until she was turned into a tree and until she met the blonde boy once more. Naruto awoke with a gasp. The last thing he remembered was the stupid fox yelling at him for sacrificing himself for a group of fleshbags. We, fleshbags, have a name. Talia frowned, glaring at the image. Annabeth nodding with her, glaring that patented Athena glare. Well, he remembered that in a lot of pain in his shoulders. And in his legs for that matter. Actually, his whole body hurt. Like, a lot. He's not supposed to be here yet. An old woman exclaimed, making the blonde teenager wince at the sound of her voice. Oh joy, it's them, Hades said blandly with a grimace marring his pale face. The string isn't cut, insisted another old woman's voice, we have time to fix this. Them, saving someone, Percy said, and turned to his father, they can do that. Poseidon nodded, it is in their realm, son. Well, that is a shame because he is here, a younger woman retorted. Naruto groaned quietly, all the yelling was giving him a headache. His groan earned the attention of the speakers, all of them looking at him. Naruto returned the looks and was surprised with what he found. Three old ladies, all with hair whiter than snow, were staring at him in surprise, and hanging from their hands was a long string that felt very important. They were dressed in white and each looked at him unblinkingly, silver eyes staring into his own blue. Creepy, Leo muttered, you have no idea, Percy frowned, 
remembering how he saw his future flash before his eyes. Behind them stood a dark-skinned man with long dark hair, a healthy lean build that would have had a girl blushing had they seen him. His honey golden eyes were far more ancient than he appeared and an aura Naruto would have sworn was nature chakra came from him. Well, that's more god energy than nature chakra, or whatever that is, Hades mused. Isn't that the thing he has from his deal with Pan? Annabeth asked. Hermes snapped his fingers, yep, that was it. So kinda like woodland magic or something along similar lines. Sitting in two obsidian thrones were two more people, a young woman that had a beauty that reminded the blonde of springtime. Demeter and Hades smiled at that, and a man who he would have claimed was Sasuke's father, had the man been any less pale than he already was. Perhaps this was Sai's true father. That pasty-faced boy with the fake smile. Hades muttered in a frown. The son of Apollo was a hurtful little whelp, isn't he? Stupid boy. One of the old ladies scolded him. You have years ahead of you to go. Now look at this mess we're in. Wow. Them complaining about someone dying before they should. Just so weird. Apollo said, getting nods from the other gods. Say wa. Naruto elegantly replied. The son of Apollo was jarred from his thoughts as his spatial awareness kicked in, leaning back as he caught the medallion to avoid being struck by a kanai. Ninjas attack at night, classic, Piper said, and typical of them. So lame, too. Standing, Naruto rolled his neck as he slipped the medallion into one of his expanded pockets. The blonde turned to where the kanai had come from, meeting the eyes of the shinobi that stood at the other end of the barracks. You know, the second I yell the whole camp will be up at arms, informed the blonde, reaching down to uncap his kanai case, who let you out of your kennel, dog boy. Shikamaru snatched the key from a guard, Kiba replied. The Romans scoffed, who did they look like? The Amazons with one-click locks. He lifted his right arm and revealed the seal the blonde had left behind, all that remains is for you to take these damn seals off. And why would he? Annabeth asked, incredulous. Why were these ninjas so stupid? Let me see if I got this straight, began the teenage blonde with his hands raised, you just escaped from a guarded cell, in a foreign military camp, and you want me, the one who subdued you and who you're trying to detain, to, finish releasing you from your chain. These ninjas seem to be, uh, soft in the head a little. Leo pointed out, no duh fire boy, Nico said, really dumb in fact. Naruto snorted, what? Do you think I'm an idiot? Wouldn't surprise me. Kiba retorted with a scowl. This is the last time I'm going to ask nicely. Take. Them. Off. Ares just gave the dumb dog boy the finger. The kid knew nothing about being a prisoner. Seriously it was sad. Naruto vanished as soon as the opposite man's eyes blinked. He reappeared with his arm thrown over Kiba's shoulders. A kanai in his other hand aimed at the man's gut. Naruto leaned his head back looking at the moon as it hung in the sky, before he said, you really are in no place to threaten me, Kiba. You're just full of hot air, and trust me, I know what hot air looks like. Hey, he only speaks the truth, Artemis smiled playfully. Still, Apollo pouted, so uncalled for. I, oh save it, Kiba, the blonde cut in, you and I both know that Shikamaru is waiting over on the fourth cohort's barracks, and Akamaru is carrying the still-recovering Choji to the exit, which is under guard mind you. So whatever Shikamaru is planning, might as well call it off. So he can sense them as well. Good to know, Athena glanced at the image a bit, sensory powers as well. The boy really was something else. This is the plan, stupid. Kiba snapped, flicking his wrist and revealing a kanai that was hidden in his jacket sleeve. He spun towards Naruto bringing the kanai up to stab him in the shoulder. The blonde retracted his arm, turning out of way to avoid the strike. He ducked a wild claw strike, a classic Inazuka move, and countered with a punch into the side of the abdomen, just a bit too low and too left to strike the solar plexus. Kiba doubled over with a gasp, letting Naruto be free to grab onto the back of the older man's flak jacket, then driving his knee up into the target he had initially missed with his punch. It's not as easy as it was on the playground, keeps. Naruto taunted. Ah, childhood bullies, the best fights to get back at, Ares grinned in approval. As he shoved the canine-affiliated shinobi to the side, I'm not the twiggy, 
underfed orphan boy who got by on food stamps anymore. Apollo frowned at that, but shook it off. His kid was stronger for it in the end. The. Dot the fuck are food stamps? Kiba asked as he struggled to get back up. Naruto rolled his eyes before grabbing the older man by the ears, pulling him up easily. The blonde pulled his head back before driving his forehead into Kiba's nose, earning a very satisfying crunch. As Kiba yelled in pain, Naruto looked around, eyes narrowing in thought. Oh, that clever motherfucker, praised the blonde before he closed his eyes and flared his chakra, his body reacting as it normally did when he would in the past, he started to glow. The light illuminated the area slightly, revealing a once-hidden Shikamaru watching from where Naruto had sat before this fight began. So, he's a walking flashlight, Percy deducted. Apollo looked insulted while Artemis smiled, very accurate, Percy Jackson. She chuckled lightly. In his hand was another kunai waiting to be thrown, his eyes narrowed. Naruto stopped glowing just as quickly as he started, turning around and punt kicking the rising Kiba in the head. Kiba's head snapped up, falling back into blissful unconsciousness. Nice. Kicking the dog while he's down. Ares snickered. Athena rolled her eyes, of course you would encourage such behavior. Duh, you figured out the key to my lock, accused the blonde, that I can believe. Didn't exactly make it hard to figure out. A quick application of ink that was in your supplies and poof, no more seals. Kept Kiba sealed up to keep me off my guard. Your first mistake was thinking I wouldn't notice his screams not getting anyone's attention. Wow, give the guy a medal. Annabeth praised. Naruto was really smart, or shrewd one could say. He had his share of blonde moments. A gamble I had to take, Shikamaru admitted, looking to his unconscious friend with disappointment. Yes, your distraction was that worthless. Hades amended. The man sighed and pulled out a cigarette, lighting it with a match. After a good inhale, Shikamaru asked, what was the second giveaway? Yes, break apart his plan more, Athena smiled. She loved people doing that. It was such fun at times. You stole a key to the cell from the guards. While having no chakra or weapons. Naruto scoffed, please. I learned the hard way how not to rely on chakra all the time. It makes things too easy, until it becomes impossible to use. And you, being the lazy ass you are, wouldn't have been able to overpower two well-trained Romans. Especially while in a cell. Oh snap. Leo snickered out, and, Shikamaru asked, his eyebrow arching in interest. You had help, Naruto concluded. Approaching the smoking shinobi, Naruto continued, someone, I don't know who or why, but someone helped you escape. And the worst part of it is, I know Konoha didn't send you back up. I would have sensed it. Bullshit. Hestia scrunched her nose at the language. No, really I would have, the blonde insisted. There's no one outside of the hidden lands that uses chakra like we do. Practically everyone here is a civilian. Less than in some cases. Trust me, I would have felt it if you had backup. So that means someone in this camp has decided to willingly assist an enemy of the state. Yes, a soon to be dead to rights, Octavian, the wind boy said, his tone tight. And the only reason I can think of someone doing that is, me. Shikamaru remained quiet content with taking another drag of his cigarette. There was more silence for a while before Naruto said, you want me to go back to Konoha with you, correct? Well, that has been basically what they've been whining about, for like the whole last book, so yeah. Hermes said blandly. The Jonin nodded slowly, his brow furrowing. All right then, Naruto shrugged, the fact someone was willing to betray Camp Jupiter just to get rid of me proves that I'm more of a problem here than I thought. I have some business back at Konoha that has to be settled anyway. Just like that, Shikamaru asked suspiciously. Wait for it, Hermes trialed off with a business-like smile on his face. TCH, fuck no not just like that, Naruto retorted with a scowl, you're going to be my tickets back into Konoha. What, you officially have two options, Naruto snapped, option one, best option, I go back to Konoha the same way you got here, quick quiet and unseen. No more fighting, no more fuss. Ooh, ooh, opinion too. Ares bounced in his throne with excitement. 
I don't suppose you'd appreciate being handcuffed, deadpan the Jonan. What is with these guys? Percy complained. Do they not get that Naruto is in control of, like, the entire situation? Even Percy could tell that and that was saying something in the minds of the others. Gee, what made you think that? Sarcastically replied the Guardian, no restraints, or I will show you how badly I held back against Choji. Yeah, like going supernova on them, Leo grinned big time. Unfortunately, I believe you, Shikamaru admitted before sighing, troublesome blonde. It runs in the family, Artemis said with twinkling wit. Ha, 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 please, do go on, Arte. Apollo applauded for her. Well, if you insist, no, not really. She was cut off, sending a scowl towards her grinning brother. I try, Naruto said with a smirk before raising two fingers, option two, worst decision. You deny my offer to come peacefully, I sound the alarm and you as well as the rest of your squad get killed before the night is done. I like this option, a lot, Ares said. Of course you would, you lout. Hephaestus groaned with a shake of his misshaped head. Go hump one of your bulls. That leaves you here, Shikamaru said with a frown. He knows this world better, obviously, he knows a method to return to his homeland. Athena said knowingly. I know most of the ways to get to Konoha, but you wouldn't believe me, Naruto said crossing his arms, I'm curious as to how you got here. Sue me. See, yes Athena, her siblings groaned, geez, little miss know it all. Shikamaru stared at his younger opponent, his mind racing. Seconds of silence felt like hours were passing for Naruto, his body tense and ready to retaliate if Shikamaru decided to be difficult. Now, normally he'd be against going back to Konoha altogether, beating the ever-loving shit out of the shinobi and call it a day but he had been thinking about how the quest had been so far. Sooner or later he'd have to go to Konoha to get the cure for Bianca's illness from the shadow slug. Hades smiled at that while Nico nodded towards the blondes thinking. Go Naruto. The boy smirked, he knew the son of the sun wouldn't let Bianca down. So, why not do it on his terms instead of someone else's? Fine, Shikamaru's voice earned Naruto's full attention allowing the blonde to grin as the genius continued, just one thing first, who's Apollo? Apollo coughed into his hand, clearing his throat to speak but his sister slapped him upside the head, ow, oh come on. He whined. You did it once, twice is not funny, at all. Was all she told her frowning brother. The sun god didn't understand, his intros were the best. Naruto had to fight down the urge to laugh at the poor foreigner's face from the question. The blonde couldn't suppress the grin that threatened to cross his face, though. Shaking his head Naruto looked up at the moon, grin still plastered on his face as he said, the guy that let you out, was he tall, skinny and blonde. Wow, Octavian is just so obvious that Naruto knew it was him. Percy nodded in praise. Well, most likely the other Apollo kids, like Naruto, have very little love for Octavian, only entitled respect for his job. Jason explained, still frowning at the action done by the blonde moron. Yeah, his name was, Octavian, Naruto interrupted with a shake of his head. Running a hand through his messy blonde locks, he growled, that son of a bitch. He reminds me of you, Shikamaru said, getting a glare from the blonde. Why don't you just spit in the guy's face? Jason asked, it would be less insulting. Physically, he acts more like, Sasuke would have had he, you know, not gone crazy. Why do the blondes have their own little traitors? Leo asked. Seriously, Naruto has this Sasuke guy, Jason has Octavian, Percy had one too, right? He got better in the end. Percy insisted to Leo, though he did understand what the pyro was getting at. His brows furrowed. Wait, I'm not blonde. Not what I meant, but your friend was Annabeth's too, right? Yeah, definitely that stupid Haru specs, Naruto growled. Holding a hand up, Naruto said, before we go, one quick thing. And, time skip, Apollo decreed. Talia woke up as she went to bed, pissed off. She didn't have her handsome boy toy to snuggle with, said Aphrodite. The hunter didn't even bother to glare at the love goddess, her other was still far too pissed at Naruto to even care for that, and she was right there with her.
She was pissed off at her boyfriend for hiding her brother. Damn right, Talia said with a nod. She was pissed off at her boyfriend for not telling off Reyna for flirting with him. Boo, Piper jeered at the Roman girl. She was pissed off at her boyfriend for not telling her anything about this stupid quest. That's a big can of pissed off, Nico muttered, getting a sparking glare from his cousin, oh come on, it's true. Damn it, Talia growled to herself as she rolled out of the cot she was assigned. She was pissed off that Naruto didn't come wake her up. Again. See, she wanted her morning kiss, simple as that. Mom, let's listen to the story, please. Piper asked the goddess. Fine sweetie, but I was just saying is all. Instead, she was woken up by a loud alarm that echoed through the camp. I hate morning drills. Jason sighed out. Talk about annoying. Grabbing her jacket from the hangar as she left the barracks, Talia raised a hand to shield herself from the unnaturally bright sunlight. There was a lot of shouting and several armored teens were running across the previous day's calm roads. Talia, the raven-haired girl turned at the sound of her name and found Piper running up to her, still dressed as she was the day before. Should have gotten something new dear. Aphrodite chided her daughter. From where? We do have a general store. Jason pointed out. For Roman's right, the love child deadpanned. Point taken. Piper, Talia greeted, any idea what was going on? Not a clue, the younger girl replied before asking, do you know what a dream about a dove and an eagle flying together means? Symbolism. Aphrodite cheered while clapping her hands. Jason and Piper smiled at one another, that was perfectly fine with them. Plus, it would be interesting to see them take a slow approach to their relationship instead of how they met. Not that they regretted it of course. Never. Ever. They'd never regret being on that bus to the Grand Canyon together. Talking to the wrong person, Talia replied before stopping a passing Roman, Hey, what's going on? The prisoners have escaped and legionnaire Uzumaki is missing, the Roman replied, the praetors are by the holding cells. I figured you'd want to talk to Jason next. Well, that's considerate of him. Talia mused out. We're good like that, Jason boasted to his sister who smirked at him. Smart kid, Talia complimented, getting a salute. I like that, getting saluted. I used to get that all the time, Jason chuckled out to his sister. We really need to catch up on stuff, the hunter told him. Later, he agreed with a nod. Before looking at Piper, come on. The two immediately went to the holding cells, outside of which they immediately found two tall Roman teens getting scolded by Jason while Reyna shook her head in disbelief. It wasn't really their fault bro. Not now Leo. Jason sighed out, how was he supposed to know? The blonde teen turned to face them at Reyna's nudge, greeting his older sister with a grin. He turned and said something to the Romans in Latin, causing the two to quickly flee. Looking back at his sister, Jason asked, so, do you want to hear the good news or bad news? I hate that phrase. Percy grumbled, bad news, the prisoners broke out and Naruto is missing. Talia summed up with ease. Ah, the good old rumor mill. Hazel laughed out. Word does pass around fast. Frank said. Jason nodded. Yep. And the good news. Talia asked. Reina held up one of Naruto's tri-prong kanai. Naruto didn't leave without a fight. That wasn't a fight. It was a one-man beat down. Ares snorted. And he left voluntarily. Athena added. Not the wisest move but if it was for his quest, she couldn't truly argue against the decision. Snatching the weapon from the girl crushing on her boyfriend. Not rude at all. Stuff it McLean, you'd do the same. Touché. Talia looked at the weapon. She turned it over in her hands a few times before noticing something being off with the handle. A flap of the handle was peeling off, prompting her to carefully undo what was being done. Talia found a clue. Annabeth cheered. Is she going to do a victory dance? Percy snickered. Yeah, on your head wethead, so shut it. What are you doing? Reyna demanded, you're ruining his weapon. Stupid whiny, Talia stopped at her aunt's side glance. Best not get her angry. I'm reading the message, corrected the daughter of Zeus as she continued to unroll a small slip of paper. She handed the knife to Piper and read the message that Naruto had left behind. Her brows furrowed before she read the message aloud, ask Octavian. 
Oh, he is good. Jason grinned. Octavian can't get out of this. Finally, he said, sounding very un-Jason like. Um, dude, scaring us here. Leo pointed. Sorry. Jason and Reyna shared a look and began speaking in hushed Latin. Jason became angry. Oh yeah I would be. Stopping a passing girl by grabbing her by the arm and ordering her to do something relating to Octavian. The girl nodded and rushed off, leaving Jason to round back on Reyna. I told you he's been getting power hungry. You only recently figured that out. Hazel asked Jason. No, I always knew. Jason argued, but he was too sneaky to get caught. He grumbled. Most do, but he's our only auger, Reyna countered, without him. Should really train one then, get one that is actually an auger. Apollo pointed out, he was disappointed in his legacy, he really was, stuffed animals, PSH. There's no excuse for releasing enemies within the camp, endangering all of us for personal gain. Jason ranted. Damn right, who endangered us? Octavian asked as he approached the gathered four. Oh look at him, acting all nonchalant. Annabeth shook her head, not liking him at all. Jason took a step towards him, right in the nose. Hazel cheered, stopped only by Reyna's hand. Boo, Reyna, let Jason slug him. Percy cheered, getting other cheers. Don't play games, Octavian. Jason snapped, you released the prisoners and now they've captured one of us. I don't care for your accusations, Jason, Octavian retorted. I'm still the Praetor, Jason growled, he honestly believes he can just brush me off. He glowered, oh he hoped the worst came upon the boy. Before shifting his gaze to Talia and Piper, and why are they here? This is a camp concern, isn't it? I want to stab him, Talia pouted. Trust me, I've contemplated it for a while now. They are here because their friend is missing, the blonde Praetor said and the guards for last night told both Reyna and myself you had ordered them to step outside. That just screams somehow he had a hand in it. Leo muttered, glaring at the screen. You seem awfully eager to jump at the words of two members of the fifth cohort, replied the auger with a scowl, it was two members of the fifth that were on watch, correct? And now he tries to blame the fifth. Hazel cried out with rage, Frank had a frown as Jason's eyes seemed akin to a thunderstorm. Are you accusing my soldiers? No, my friends of lying to me. Jason asked as his eyes narrowed. Big mistake, Jason whispered. Well they have always been jealous of the first cohort, Octavian said, what better way to get back at us by getting me, a centurion of the first cohort. Jason, Reyna warned the blonde as he tensed and prepared to make a move against the auger. Jason's fists were clenched and he was fighting down the anger he felt for Octavian. I say let him have it, Ares said, boy overstepped his authority. He was proud of being a member of the fifth cohort and how far they had come. Jason was not entirely sure he deserved all the credit to the fifth cohort's slow return to Jupiter's grace. He wouldn't have been as strong as he was had Naruto not shown up those five years ago. Wait, Leo said, getting everyone to look at him, does that mean Jason is even stronger now? Everyone turned to Jason who in turn shrugged, possible, Naruto helping me with my powers, it is very possible. Wow, Piper said in whispering awe, she didn't think that was possible. Jason had learned from the older blonde many things, but the one lesson Naruto pounded, literally in some cases, into his head was that of never leaving comrades behind. I like that, Hazel smiled, it was a good policy. It was what he had started to drill into the other members of the fifth cohort. They probably were not the most prestigious cohort of the Legion, but they were now the most efficient. Wow, go Naruto, Jason said with a tugging smile, getting nods from Hazel and Frank as well. Octavian, Reyna began, not only have the guards said to us, but we received a message from Naruto, telling us to ask you. Get out of that snake, Percy smirked, well he and I don't get along, Octavian said, and we displayed that loud enough to be heard throughout the camp yesterday. Even the guards must have talked about it. The prisoners must have forged his handwriting. Funny, didn't they just learn English? Talia asked. It's written in Greek, Talia informed him, turning the note around for Octavian to see, and those invaders only just learned English. See, my other is right on the ball here. The hunter nodded. How do you know? 
Octavian countered with a scowl in her direction, maybe those invaders came from closer to home than you think. Oh that, Jason was fuming, he didn't even have the words to describe how he wanted to rip that string bean's head off. Are you implying that we're behind this? Talia asked as her eyes narrowed. He best not be, Talia frowned. Octavian smirked, those are your words. Greek, that shit, the daughter of Zeus growled. Did her brother really have to deal with this guy? Before either of the angry Grace siblings could speak, there was a bright flash of light. Those around the area, once the light had faded, immediately knelt down and bowed their heads. God alert, Hermes chimed with a smile. Who's that deity? Apollo asked with a grin. Jason, Reyna, and even Octavian bowed their heads in respect for the being that stood before them. Piper and Talia, However, just stared in disbelief. Phoebus Apollo, it's Apollo. Phoebus, Hermes snickered out. Oi, shut up, I hate that name. The sun god pouted, had expensive sunglasses covering his eyes and was wearing an expensive business suit. He had a cell phone pressed against his ear and was talking animatedly into it, yeah. No yeah, yeah, yeah I understand, Vinny. I just need you to understand that I haven't got time for you to get indecisive about doing another sequel. Alright listen, we have got to talk about this later, that up and comer is on the other line. Chow bud. Trouble in the office, his younger brother mocked. Oh, funny, you would know all about that, wouldn't you, the god of the arts shot back. Low, very low, hanging up the phone Apollo sighed as he looked up before looking over at the two preters. Rolling his eyes he waved his hand, oh, everyone just get up. Where's the Greek girls? He turned around and found the both of them staring at him. Extending his arms, Apollo said, ah, well fantastic. We're all here then, the Greeks, the golden boy of Juno. Even he calls you out on it, bro. Leo snickered, getting a pouty Jason. And, the sneak, oh, now this is going to be good. Hazel smiled her fellow Romans nodding eagerly. Apollo turned around and faced Octavian, you, you betrayed this camp, and he just outright says it. Jason said, arms in the air just like he didn't care. Woo, finally. I, I didn't do anything. Octavian stammered. So, he's calling me a lair. Apollo asked in a frosty tone. Incineration, Hazel hoped with big golden eyes. No, no, too easy. The god answered ducking his head, forgive me, father. Oh, now he's wrong. Apollo rationalized with pursed lips, who is it Octavian? Come on, big boy words. He mocked. Apollo's eyes narrowed, you released enemy forces into this camp with the sole intent to get some petty vengeance on one of your own. No cool. Percy frowned, it really isn't Octi. He he was an exile. I did not say you could speak, Apollo snapped. Pimp slap him, Ares, come on, I have him quivering, why degrade him further? Apollo asked his war brother. Duh, it's fun, Ares said as if it was the most simplistic thing in the world. You have felt comfort for far too long, Octavian. You've abused your place as Augur, and you have disgraced my lineage. Damn right he has, the sun god agreed, damn right he does. Jason nodded to the abuse of power portion of the statement. No. No, no please, Octavian groveled, please, I can do better. Don't take this from me, Augury is all I know. Sad fact, ve true. Jason pointed out, he only got into the first because of that. Weak fighter all around, he mainly blackmails to keep his centurion seat. Why not kick him out? Percy asked, he's a slippery little weasel, no evidence and no one's willing to come forward out of fear of the blackmail coming out. Placing a hand on the pale teen's head, Apollo smiled as he said, I would never take away such a gift. You love your prophecies, more than you do your status, am I right? Oh, I am good. Apollo grinned. What? Percy asked. You'll see, yes, yes. Phoebus Apollo's cold eyes warmed slightly before hardening. His hand clenched around Octavian's head and calmly, the Roman aspect of Apollo said, allow me to hone your gift, then. Well, he's boned, Hermes muttered, Octavian's eyes widened and he started to scream in agony, his hands went to the side of his head, just shy of touching Apollo's hand. 
Apollo gave a cold smile as the kids stiffened at the image, they hadn't seen something like this before. The gods looked on, not even bothered by the image. The pale teen stopped screaming, resorting to begging, no more. Take it back. Talia bit her lip, it reminded her of Hal a little. Only Hal was a hero and not some scumbag like Octavian. This is your punishment for going against my wishes, Apollo snapped, the prophecy you were to give Jason today. Give it to him. Bet he would have held out on it. Jason muttered with a frown. Octavian released another cry of agony, prompting Apollo to squeeze harder. I said. Tell him. Ares made a whipping noise and laughed cruelly. Damn, it had been a while since he'd seen the sun god do something like this. It was refreshing. The auger squeezed his eyes tight, as though having an inner debate, before he opened his mouth once more, Jupiter's child rides soul steed. To a hidden world a friend is freed. The man with two faces attacks above. Rescue comes from an eagle and dove. Wow, first time I saw him actually give a full prophecy. The blonde boy said. Really? Piper asked. Yeah, mainly he would have a verse or two, that's it. And even with that would take him hours to get. Apollo shone brightly and retracted his hand. Octavian collapsed, curling in on himself and starting to speak incoherently, switching between Latin and English in an impossibly fast pace. I think you broke him. Leo, too soon. For Octavian, he asked his best friend. Point. Jason admitted. Talia put herself between her boyfriend's father and Piper, not used to this side of a god. Many of us aren't, the hunter admitted, thanks to Leah. No prob Piper, her own father's decision to turn her into a tree notwithstanding, and the mockery of a vote last winter, that was the first time she had seen a god really punish someone. Get him out of here, Apollo said to two Romans. They acted quickly, rushing to help the incoherent auger up. As he stood, Octavian shoved himself out of their grasp and went to Jason, grasping the blonde by the shoulders. Unhand me you darn dirty ape. Apollo busted a gut with Hermes, nice Leo, really, classic. I do what I must. If you go, your life will change forever. Octavian hissed with madness in his eyes, the changes will spread and burn all that made this camp what it is. Athena was all smiles if that happened. Burn it, burn new Rome to the ground. It was a nice slogan. Get off me. Jason snapped, shoving the weaker teen off, put him in a cell. Throw the book at him. Apollo added as the two Romans addressed earlier took the auger away. Justice is my department, Zeus told his son, but he did have an amused look upon his visage. Apollo shrugged, it was funny nonetheless. Taking off his sunglasses, Apollo used a piece of cloth retrieved from his pockets to clean the lenses. The god looked at the praetors, his piercing blue eyes locking on those of Jason's before he said with a grin, looks like we have a lunch date. Jason frowned, he didn't like that grin. So who likes Tex-Mex? I could go for a chimichanga, Apollo said as he led the teens into the dining area. Hades chuckled, classic Deadpool. Nico rolled his eyes, his father had such a hero crush. The few already there quickly vacated when they pieced together who Apollo was. The blonde man frowned at one of the tables of the barracks dining pavilion. With a simple wave of his hand, the table had changed into one that could be seen at a restaurant, complete with tablecloth, rolled napkins around silverware and placemats for them. Of course you would, Artemis said with a roll of her eyes. Hey, you have to do business with style, the sun god argued. No you don't, just do your business and be done with it. Bah, what would you know about business, sis? Apollo asked with a childish pout. Apollo took the now lush and expensive looking dining chair that could arguably call the head of the table, leaning back with a content sigh. It's not the Ritz, but it's comfy, he said. The god then gestured to the other chairs, take a seat, ladies. And Jason. Jason rolled his eyes as he did, sitting across from Talia. Raina sat next to her fellow Praetor while Piper claimed the spot next to the older Grace. Talia warily kept an eye on the god of the sun, who was looking at the four teens with a serious gaze. She should, punishing someone like that would raise anyone's caution flag. Athena said to her brother. Little Brad deserved it, said Apollo with a shrug. 
The Romans silently agreed with the Greek sun god. He then looked at their empty placemats, hem. No Tex-Mex, then. Something else, perhaps. We should really discuss why you're here, Jason said, almost insistent. Ooh, bad move lightning boy. Roman side goes by his flow, said Apollo, who shook his head. Well, we rarely ever see the gods. Jason pointed out, plus, to his other, a good friend was just taken, or at least he thought he was taken. Apollo sent him a look of annoyance before rolling his eyes with a huff, I try to be nice, and this is how I'm repaid. I know, Apollo agreed, it's not that, Lord Apollo, Reina said, but we have urgent matters to attend to. Prisoners from another land have escaped and Naruto Uzumaki is. I know where he is, Apollo interrupted. The four teens looked at him and he smirked, yes, I figured that would garner your attentions. Now, Jason, you have a quest to ride Soul's steed, correct? Joy, the flaming horse. Talia grimaced, she agreed with her other. She did not like that horse. Yes, you insisted that Octavian give me the quest, reminded the son of Jupiter. Oh he was practically begging to tell the boy, Hermes said with roll of his eyes. I know, such a good little messenger boy. Apollo grinned, getting his younger brother to glare at him for the messenger remark. Technically, yes I did, nodded the god of the sun. He then looked to the Greek side of the table and said with a thinly veiled tolerance. It's just how our other sides roll sadly. Apollo shook his head, it was stupid, but his other loved to mess with little Greeks. Now as for you too, you will be accompanying him because of your part in Naruto's prophecy. We have a part in Naruto's prophecy. Talia asked with surprise. Great. Even more things are being revealed that Naruto had kept hidden. She didn't even receive the full prophecy, just little hints. Talia frowned, her other had yet to truly explode on Naruto, or even talk about this. She wondered how that was going to end. I'm not surprised that he didn't tell you, replied Apollo, it was a unique prophecy, one given to him by Helios. Talia felt her jaw pop open slightly, are really? Do you think I would lie about that? The god asked. Truth god, can't. Apollo grimaced. Apollo snorted before reaching into his pocket and pulling out his phone. He fiddled with the device for a moment before he said, Ah, here we are. The god pressed a button and placed the phone down. The prophecy was read by the voice of a woman. A life risked for the ghost king's precious one. Me again, Nico said, bored kinda from hearing it once more. The family reunites after the Roman attacks the sun. That they did, Talia grinned, getting Jason to smile back at her. That's already happened, Reina said with a hint of disgust in her voice. To think, one of Bacchus' children would be a traitor. Dionysus frowned, he didn't know. He muttered, three take the fire steed neither west nor east. The pinwheel spiral blade revives the leaf's dreaded beast. The first part obviously relates to us, Jason said, gesturing to Talia and Piper as well as himself. Wonderful, I have to fly on the horse. Talia grimaced. She was already not liking this. She could only wonder what was going through her other's head. Just wait, Apollo said with a raised hand, there's still more. Rescue comes from the power of lightning and thunder. The shadow slug defeats death with a gift of wonder. After the guardian's past returns twice more two brothers shall fall during the labyrinth war. Dionysus and Apollo frowned, remembering which two brothers died in this dimension. The phone clicked off and Apollo retrieved it, stuffing it back into his pocket. He looked around the table before he said, listen, normally, I just let these things run their course, last winter aside. Artemis smiled towards her brother, who gave a beaming one back. However, this was a prophecy devised by someone outside of my circle. When I caught wind of it, I decided to issue my own prophecy to you, Jason. Leaning forward to the boy, he continued, I want you to bring my son back from the place he was taken. And he better, the sun god frowned. He will, Jason said confidently. He was a tad nervous, having never dealt with the Roman Apollo personally, but believed his other could do it. Rescue comes from the power of lightning and thunder, Piper's voice earned everyone's attention, what? The prophecy is talking about Jason and Talia. 
The only thing I can't figure out is where I fit in. Really? Inquired the girl seated on Jason's left, Lady of the Doves. Charm speaking, you're obviously a daughter of Venus. Don't have to be all snippy about it, Hyper frowned, and started to mutter mocking things about Reyna. Her dislike for the girl was getting the better of her. Aphrodite, Apollo corrected sternly and looked as though he swallowed something sour, little McLean here is Greek. Not much of a difference between my Greek and Roman children, love is universal after all. The love goddess said. The goddess of love is my mother. Piper asked in surprise. She didn't see that coming, especially with how tomboyish she is. I know the feeling girl, trust me. Piper said to her other. Aphrodite pouted. Sweetie, sorry mom. Wasn't she supposed to be a total love obsessed girl in that case? They are not that bad, the love goddess frowned. Yes they are, said Artemis, Talia, and even Piper. Aphrodite just gave a pretty frown. Yeah, Naruto had a theory on that one, Talia added. More like new, Talia corrected. The raven-haired girl continued as the pieces fell in place, so you are the dove in the prophecy Jason got. All right, now that we have this titling revelation out of the way, shall we get a move on? Inquired the sun god. The teens all stood and began to leave the dining pavilion. Apollo stopped Talia, placing a hand on her shoulder. Oh no, Apollo groaned, covering his face with his hand. Talia frowned, remembering the talk Roman Apollo had with Naruto. Yeah, this wasn't going to be pretty. When the others looked at him, he smiled reassuringly, we'll only be a second, just a few words of advice for my son's girlfriend. More like a back off warning, Talia frowned. I want it to be known that I am not responsible for my Roman half. Jason was the last to leave but the second he did the door of the dining pavilion shut. Apollo removed his hand and walked around to Leah, glaring down to her with his arms crossed. After a few moments of tense silence and shifting uncomfortably under the god's gaze, Talia finally broke, what do you want? I want many things, Apollo said in a crisp tone, but from you I would like it if you broke it off with my son. And so it begins, Hera smiled, wondering how this was going to go, hopefully bad for one Talia Grace. The Queen of Heaven's siblings rolled their eyes, knowing that look she had meant nothing good. Excuse me, Talia asked. She faltered for words before finding her voice once again, you're the one that tricked us into a fucking dance at Christmas. He did, Talia said in bewilderment. Seriously, what happened during Christmas? Oh Grace, little Miss Talia Grace, let me explain, Apollo began. The hunter frowned at his wording, not liking the pitying way it sounded at all. You see, that was my Greek self, my stupid self. See, a huge dick. Both figurative and literal, Apollo assured, getting looks of disgust from the others. Agreed. The love goddess nodded happily, to which her boyfriend and husband scowled at. I'm Roman right now. Talia just gave him a confused look, prompting the god to cup his chin. Hum. How should I put this? Ah, Elvis has left the building is an appropriate phrase. Not that helpful to be honest. Athena mused aloud, getting her brother to stick his tongue at her. B but you're standing right here, the raven-haired girl said. Wow, that's kinda sad. Shut up, wethead. Oh order, why is this so difficult? Said Apollo as he pinched the bridge of his nose in frustration. Lowering his hand, the god of the sun said, all right, I'll put it like Naruto would. The gods have multiple personality disorder, one is Greek and the other is Roman. Get it? That is much better. The kids nodded, seriously, why not just say that all the time and not be cryptic about it? Talia slowly nodded, making Apollo exhale in relief, thank us. Tell me why you don't want me to be with Naruto, Talia bluntly demanded. Straight to the point and blunt as a two by four. Hades said, wonder where she gets that from. He mocked. Zeus glared at his brother for the remark as Talia frowned along with him. The Roman god of the sun snorted, why? I'll tell you why, he's going to outgrow you, Talia. At the end of this war with the crooked one, the Olympians are going to offer him a place amongst the gods. They are? Asked the demigods. Most of the gods nodded to this, with Naruto's circumstances, they would probably do that. Why would they offer him that? 
asked the girl in confusion and a bit of envy. There's that power lust, Percy said in a chipper tone. Oh go jump off a building. Already did that once, thank you very much. Apollo shook his head as his hands went to his waist. Oh, it's so sad how sincerely confused you are. Apollo ignored the glare being sent his way by his half-sister. Like he said, he held no responsibility over his Roman side. Why would we offer him a place amongst us? Hello, he's got the soul of a god and the strength of one to boot. That's the main point, Poseidon said, but not the fully part of the reason. A good chunk of it nonetheless. He bested and disarmed Atlas, a feat not many can declare. Naruto even managed to slip him back into his punishment, a sleight of hand that thieving Greek god would be envious of. True, Hermes admitted, that was amazing to see and something he wished he could have pulled off. Talia admitted that it was an impressive bit of info to put on his resume, but still Naruto wouldn't have originally disarmed Atlas without Zoe's help. Indeed, Artemis said with pride, but looked at her brother for his other trying to undermine that fact. Not my fault, geez, something she brought up, but what about when Zoe helped him? As a subordinate should do when their commander is in trouble, Apollo waved the claim off. Apollo fidgeted under Artemis' stern moon-like eyes, he does kinda have a point. The huntress huffed, not in the mood to even speak about this now, unless she wished to ruin the mood of the story. As far as I'm concerned, Naruto is already worthy. But where would that leave you? A silly little Greek with, what's the female equivalent of a bastard? What? Talia screamed out in fury. It's still bastard. Hera supplied helpfully, a smile adoring her face. Talia just sent the woman a scalding glare. Wow, he is really gunning for you, Apollo whistled. Sure, he knew his Roman half was an asshole, but damn. While Talia was fuming, Jason was also frowning, fists clenched at the Roman god's words towards his sister. I don't have to take this from you. Talia snapped, her cheeks flushed and her eyes sparking with rage. Damn right you don't, the hunter readily agreed with her other. Never said you did, agreed Apollo. His eyes hardened as they narrowed, but I still want you to call it off. Weren't you going to anyway? After you found out he kept your brother a secret. Maybe that's not the only thing he's keeping from you. Ooh, he is good. Aphrodite smiled, a wicked gleam in her eyes. The raven-haired demigoddess just stood there glaring at him for a moment before storming around him and out the door. She couldn't dispute that since it was one of the things she dreaded the most, that there was something even worse Naruto was keeping from her. Talia frowned at that, what else could he be hiding? What could be worse than hiding Jason? Talia wasn't sure, but the fact remains that it was something she really needed to address when she said to Naruto. I say beat it out of him, the hunter grunted. Ah, violence, typical Talia, Nico nodded, getting punched in the shoulder. He just sent his violent cousin a death glare for speaking truth about her nature. Phoebus Apollo smirked in victory before his form shone brightly once more, revealing the Greek Apollo standing in all of his surfer attire glory. Hi me, whipping his head around in confusion, Apollo scratched the back of his head and mumbled, I have the strangest feeling that I totally just threw someone under a bus for some reason. You did, but it isn't your fault, the sun god said with a stern nod. Ah, man if my douchebag side said something to Arte again. I'll never hear the end of it for millennia. It has happened before, Artemis said with a pointed glare. I said I was sorry, her brother cried out. Apollo shone once more and Phoebus stood in his place. With nothing else to say, he calmly stepped out of the pavilion, slipping his sunglasses back on. Talia refused to look at him, which he was perfectly fine with. I bet, the hunter girl simmered. Jason took note of his sister's upset features and put a hand on her shoulder, hey, you alright? I'm fine, Talia snapped, jerking herself out of his grip. Ouch, sorry, Talia mumbled, but Jason nodded. Hey, if I knew why you were upset, I would perfectly understand, the boy told her, getting the hunter to smile. Jason wanted to pursue the subject, because clearly she was not fine, but was unable to due to suddenly being blinded by a bright flash of light. When the light died down, the son of Jupiter was in awe at what was before him. 
Strapped to a golden horse that appeared to be made of fire was a golden chariot that had a Greek sun engraved on the front. An elegant sight to see. Artemis hung. Great. My other has to ride on that, Talia grimaced. Is is that horse on fire? Piper asked in concern for the creature's state. It's fine Piper. Poseidon waved off. It was how the being was made after all. It's Zephyr, Talia said, her surprise at seeing the fiery steed overcoming her other emotions. The horse whinnied at his name, prompting Talia to continue, he's a spirit of fire that once belonged to Helios. He's Naruto's now, Apollo interjected, approaching the horse and patting him on the side, do me a solid, Zephyr, help these kids get Naruto back. Still not cooler than Blackjack, Percy said with a nod. Or Tempest, Jason added. Annabeth snorted, oh gods, they aren't cars you too, getting the boys to flush a little at her comment. Zephyr whinnied and nodded his head excitedly, making the god of the sun nod. He turned to the three teens and said, you got the go ahead. Get on and hold on tight. Talia, Piper and Jason did as they were told, the older child of the thunder god glaring at her boyfriend's father as she passed. Jason took the reins in his hand, preparing to crack them when Piper asked, um, how are we going to stay in the chariot? The biggest problem they have, the hunter girl grimaced, getting her matron to smile with mirth at how she teased her hunter at times. Hold on to the edge, Talia suggested as she realized what type of transportation she just got onto. Her eyes squeezed shut and she clenched her fist tightly onto the edge. Piper saw this and copied the older girl. Wow, flying to save your boyfriend. Says a lot. Quiet Annie. Talia said in a stern tone, still kinda pissed at Naruto, even if he wasn't real here. As they took off towards the sky, Apollo stepped back to stand next to Reina. Glancing at the other praetor, the Roman god said, don't let the daughter of Zeus beat you so easily. Cheering for the Roman, typical, but so very encouraged. Mom, Piper said in a dry tone, I thought you liked Nalia. Talia blanched at the name. Oh sweetie, I do but the drama makes it all the better. Ah, of course, Piper didn't understand at all. And increase the training drills. War is coming. Mars grows restless. Damn right I do, Ares grunted. He left before Reyna could speak, feeling as though his purpose was done, leaving the Praetor to wonder what the god of the sun had meant by his first statement. Hey, clueless, Piper jeered. Piper, sorry, the love child said not really sounding sorry and kissed Jason on the cheek. Ah, I think I'm going to be sick, Talia groaned as she barely avoided looking over the edge of the chariot, I thought that the chariot would be something, something with a seat. I personally like standing upon it, Artemis confessed. Oh sure, she could change her chariot like Apollo, but Classic was best in her opinion. Soul's chariot hasn't been seen or used since the rise of Rome, Jason said calmly. What did Apollo say the spirit's name was? Zephyr, Piper repeated, getting the horse to whinny at his name. Well, it sure is as beautiful as he is. But I thought that was the Greek god of the West Wind. Misconception, Athena said. Trust me, I've met that god, Talia snapped, he's definitely not a horse. Jason looked over his shoulder at his sister, you all right. Talia sent a playful glare to her brother, who in turn looked sheepish. I hate heights, Talia grit out as she managed to glare at her little brother. Taking the hint, Jason looked forward, mumbling, didn't think it was that bad. I know, Jason nodded, getting a half-hearted slap from his sister. Where are we going anyway? The younger demigoddess asked, north, south, Talia corrected, it feels like we're going south. Now can we please stop talking about what we're doing? So whiny, Leo muttered getting a sharp glare, well you are. I mean, I'm supposed to hate heights, yet I ruled on Festus. He smiled proudly. Talia huffed and turned away from the fire boy. Piper took the hint, deciding to quickly change the subject to hopefully a better topic. So, how did Naruto come to Camp Jupiter? Now there's a story, Hazel smiled, eager to find out about the child of light's past. Most likely the usual way, Jason answered. He trained with Lupa for a bit before being sent to camp as a probadio, a probationary camper of no rank in our army. And yet I got promoted to Praetor. Percy bragged. 
Something rare Percy for someone new to the Legion, Jason pointed out, but don't let it get to your head. But when we were looking for him, the guy who sent us to you called him a Legionnaire, continued the daughter of Aphrodite, did something change? It's a long story, Jason said as he looked forward, it was during my third year as a Legionnaire, when I became a Centurion, for the fifth cohort that Naruto arrived. He was. Dot not the average Roman. He was Greek, of course he wasn't. Athena said with a frown. I think he was talking about his personality. Apollo said smugly. Oh, like yours then. Damn right, I pity the boy then. The wisdom goddess said with a smirk, getting her brother to frown at the remark. He's not the average guy either, Piper admitted, grinning at Talia slyly, or is he? Piper flushed at the comment of her other, her mother was smiling proudly at that. Overstepping your grounds, Talia warned before groaning as she relaxed her eyes for a split second, closing them immediately, Jason, story, tell it. Now. Okay. Okay, replied the younger Grace, I saw him from time to time, the occasional passing in the fifth cohort, but I was different then. Arrogant because of who my father was, a kind of no-nonsense guy. R. Jason, arrogant, Leo gasped, say it isn't so, Piper cried out jokingly, getting Jason to flush. Well, being brought up like some holy child didn't help. The war evened me out and Lupa was a humbling teacher. The blonde boy said. In other words, you had a stick up your ass, Talia bluntly summarized. Blunt, how quaint, Jason said in a dry tone, getting Talia to snicker at her other's wording. You and Naruto are so meant to be, Jason retorted dryly. And even Jason says so, fight on Nalia, fight on. Piper just covered her face with her hands, her mom was so embarrassing. He said the same thing during our first sparing match before the weekly siege battle. I feel this will not end well, not at all. The blonde boy said. Oh yeah, time to see Jason get some, Percy said menacingly, finally, he wasn't going to be the butt of Naruto's wrath. Jason stood across from the older blonde, eyes narrowed in thought as the older teen rolled his neck excessively delaying the battle that was to come. Gritting his teeth, Jason cried out, are you so cowardly that you wish to delay your own demise? Dramatic isn't he, Hades muttered, looking towards his youngest brother. Zeus was only facing forward, ignoring the look. The teen currently stretching his arm across his chest paused in his action, tilting his head in thought before replying, nope. I couldn't honestly give a damn if I lose here. He kinda should, Jason frowned knowing why his other may be upset. If you lose here, you are denied admission into the siege. Jason snapped, furious at how disrespectful the older boy was being, you are a probidio, the fact I am fighting you should make this all the more serious. That's why, the blonde pointed out, but then again, Naruto didn't seem like the type to care. And I should care who you are because, dot why, Naruto asked as his brow arched. I am Jason Grace, Son of Jupiter, Centurion of the Fifth Cohort, announced the boy proudly, I am your superior and you will respect me. Jason buried his face into his hands, embarrassed of his childish behavior as all his friends laughed or snickered at him. Even Talia was outright laughing at him. Respect is earned, kid, replied the blonde with a snort, and so far, you have done nothing to earn mine. Burn, Leo, man, come on, Jason bemoaned getting a snicker from his friend. Then I'll fix that, Jason snapped, pulling his coin out and flipping it in the air. It descended and landed in his hand, the face of Julius Caesar looking back at him. The coin shone brightly before revealing an imperial gold sword, ready and willing to attack. Naruto rolled his eyes, shaking his arms before bringing up his right arm, revealing a golden band with a gleaming red jewel in the center. Naruto opened his mouth, and then suddenly changed his mind, lowering his arm and slipping back on his right leg. The blonde suddenly looked up and said, you ever just, watch the clouds. Wonder how they move. Oh he knows mind games, Athena smiled, hoping to see the Roman child humiliated. I will not be made a fool, Jason announced, begin the match. Nah, Naruto interlocked his hands behind his head as he looked up, I'd rather watch the clouds, maybe see how long I can stare into the sun. Which he can forever if he wanted to. Apollo snickered, 
poor little golden boy. Then I will begin the match, snapped the younger blonde. Jason rushed forward, bringing his sword up to attack. When he brought it down his eyes widened as Naruto just vanished. Jason found his sword was still lodged in a portion of a log that was sliced nearly in half. And he pulls out the switchy move on you. Having fun with woodshop Jason. Nico asked. Shut up. Too slow. Jay teased the older boy from behind the younger blonde. Jason angrily grabbed the log, pulling his sword out and tossing the fallen bit of wood away. He spun around with an angry slash, slicing the air. Oh, Jason just sent a glare to his friends for laughing at him, he could only hope this scene ended fast. Very fast. Oh, the blonde laughed out, making Jason grind his teeth in frustration. See, Naruto is having fun, Leo snickered. Oh, I swear. Something tapped his shoulder, prompting Jason to spin in the opposite direction in hopes of catching the older teen off guard. Once again he hit nothing, making the centurion growl. Well, he has his sister's temper, that much is certain. Annabeth giggled, getting to Leah to look betrayed. Why so serious, kid? Laughed out the older teen in a way that his voice sounded like it came from everywhere, you're what? 10. Relax and enjoy life. I'm sorry for being very serious, it comes with the upbringing. Jason frowned, crossing his arms. Talia placed a hand on his shoulder. The only thing I care about is the Legion's success. Jason snapped, that's all that matters. When I was younger and naive. The boy side Piper rubbed his shoulder, we know, she smiled at him, getting the blonde to place his hand atop of hers and give her a small smile back. Wrong thing to say to me, kid, retorted the blonde from right behind Jason. There was a plopping sound and then Jason cringed as something slick penetrated his ear. He didn't. Jason groaned. Leo laughed loudly. Oh dude, I think he just did. Naruto laughed as he pulled his finger out, causing Jason to furiously start wiping at it. The older blonde laughed, standing in front of the younger one, wet willy. He did. Talia laughed out, everyone giving a good snicker or chuckle as Jason's face lit up in embarrassment. You are an embarrassment to the Legion. Jason snapped with a glare. Someone's just angry, Hermes smirked. You need to lighten up, Naruto replied with a grin. Jason growled and swung his sword at the team, making Naruto laugh as he kept hopping out of the way, taunting with each miss, oh, you were so close, just then. Nearly got me that time. Try and put some back into it. Jason stopped, panting and glaring at the hardly out of breath team, fight back, damn you. Give the boy what he wants. Ares grunted out, eager to see more. You want me to get serious? Naruto asked, is that what you want? Fight me, demanded the younger blonde, his face one of fury. Definitely a younger Zeus, just without the libido. Poseidon murmured loudly, getting chuckles from the gods, well except the king and queen. All right then, all you had to do was ask, Naruto said. No, don't stop, Percy moaned. He wanted to see what Naruto did. Then he vanished, Jason said, and, I don't remember anything after it. He does. Oh he so does. Without a doubt. Jason's shoulders slacked. Please don't say it. Please, he didn't want to know. Talia noticed Jason's shoulder twitch as he said that, and she smirked. Oh, she knows. The hunter said in glee. Please just let it be an ass kicking, please. Jason prayed. Naruto was a fickle person. Who knows what he did, besides other Talia. He had gotten her to ignore what they were currently doing with his story, and for that, Talia was grateful. No problem, the brother said, however, he had teased her about it. As Naruto would put it, payback was a necessary evil. Now that is just hurtful. The boy muttered as Talia smirked, oh she loved her other. She was just so awesome. So the raven-haired teenage girl leaned forward and whispered into her brother's ear, Senen Garashi. One thousand years of pain. Apollo whistled. Damn, my boy be vicious. Jason did not like that at all. Instinctively, Jason flinched and pulled on the reins, causing the chariot to rise. He struggled to retain control while both Talia and Piper screamed in surprise. Jason pulled the reins back and called out the steed's name, making Zephyr steady himself. 
Jason, panting heavily, turned and looked at his terrified-looking sister. Through gritted teeth, Jason said, Do not ever say those words again. Metal scarring, Piper asked Annabeth. Most likely. The blonde nodded. Yeah, I figured that out, thanks. Talia snapped back as she tried to regain control of her racing heart. Geez, take a chill pill J. Oh come on, if I freak out like that, you only instigated it by bringing it up, the younger brother argued. What did she say? Piper asked curiously. A move Naruto had used on me, Jason answered after a beat of silence. The blonde teen shuddered as he thought about it, a move I wish upon no one, enemies included. It can't be that bad. Percy said, 1000 years of pain. Okay, bad. Percy revaluated, oh come on, all he does is poke you in the ass. Talia exclaimed. Everyone burst into laughter as Jason burned red in the cheeks, shame all over his face. Jason glared at her, it's an invasion of personal privacy. Amen to that, how do you know what it is? Piper asked the older girl. He used it on my cousin Percy during a training session, Talia explained. Jason turned to Percy. Ha, ha, he said in mockery. It was Percy's turn to flush red as everyone laughed at him once more, he still did it to you first. Jason just growled at that. At Piper's furrowed brow, Talia clarified, he's the son of Poseidon. Ah, Piper said with a nod of understanding. Strangest thing was the sick grin Naruto had on his face before he used it, Talia added. Big brother enforcing for his lil, sis. Apollo informed Annabeth, who giggled, which succeeded in getting her boyfriend to pout. That grin was the last thing I saw before it happened, Jason mumbled as another shiver went down his spine. Shaking the horrible memory away, Jason looked down through the clouds with furrowed brows. The blonde's eyes widened and he gasped earning Talia and Piper's attentions. Letting go of the reins with one hand, Jason pointed down and said, we, we're flying over Antarctica. So the ninja land is in the South Pole? Nico asked. Seems so. His sister nodded analytically, must be protected by the mist. No way. Piper exclaimed as she looked over the edge in awe. They had only been in the chariot for ten minutes. Helios knew how to train a horse, I'll give him that. Poseidon smiled at how well off that horse was. Don't care, Talia said flatly as her eyes closed again, just tell me when we're back on the ground. That seemed to be the magical sentence, because Zephyr suddenly climbed up before diving back down. The three teens in the chariot screamed in fear for their lives as they rapidly descended through the clouds. Zephyr whinnied once again once they broke through, and before them, was a massive walled city. To the south of the village was a large mountainside with five faces, four men and one woman. Yep, that's Naruto's home, Apollo said, remembering it from the first chapter from the first book they read. They were not falling towards it, thankfully. No, the three chariot riders and the fiery steed were heading for a large building that looked almost like a school. Jason pulled back on the reins hard enough to force Zephyr from driving them through the wall of the building instead crashing them into the ground outside. Smooth J, smooth, hey, you try riding a temperamental fire horse. He argued to his sister with crossed arms, oh wait, you don't fly. He said with a smug look. Oh, oh, someone's got a mouth on them. The sister frowned at him, glaring. Piper and Annabeth rolled their eyes. It was good to see them bonding. The three teens lost the little balance that they had left and fell out of the chariot as the doors to the building were thrown open. The chariot's attachments to Zephyr came undone and the burning horse reeled back on his hind legs, whinnying in success as the chariot burst into flame and vanished in the wind. Perfect storage, Hephaestus said with a nod, Leo looking intrigued by it. I'm going to kill that horse. Talia raged as she got to her feet. The horse in question shot past her making her spin around and prepare to attack only to gape at what she saw. Zephyr. A familiar voice cried out in surprise as the horse tackled him to the ground once again. Getting his face licked by a fiery tongue was none other than Naruto Uzumaki, son of Apollo. Perfectly hygienic too since there are no germs. Apollo nodded with his winning white smile. He was wearing a new shirt, an orange tee with a large black arrow pointing up that fitted to his chest, 
and most likely new pants by the darker shade on them, the same battle sandals on his feet he often wore. It was at that point Talia remembered that he also had hers and Piper's clothes sealed away. Something she was hell-bent on getting back. Piper nodded, she would too. Naruto, Namikaze-sama. It was then Talia realized that men and women wearing light body armor and white animal masks surrounded her, her brother and Piper. Kids got his own honor guard. Ares laughed aloud. Well, he is considered a hero in his homeland, Hera told her war child. As Naruto pushed the overly affectionate Zephyr off of him, Talia caught sight of a tanned man standing behind the blonde. He had his brown hair pulled up in a ponytail and a scar across the bridge of his nose. He wore the attire of the men that had attacked them outside Mount Othrus, putting Talia on edge. Well, you are in the heart of enemy territory, Athena said, understand her half-sister's guarded attitude. I'm okay, Naruto said to the man with the cut across his nose. He turned and lightly patted Zephyr on his emblazed neck, I'm good. He turned to look at the other three and nodded, hey Jay, nice landing. Jason wiped his hand across his mouth, checking for blood, before flipping the blonde off. I think they have the fun Jason. Leo pouted, getting Jason to frown at him. He could be fun. Load of kindness, aren't you? Naruto mumbled before grinning at Talia, Talia Chan. Dot you flew all the way out here for me. Didn't have much of a choice in the matter, snipped the girl with a frown. Yes, still mad, good. Talia nodded to her other. Honestly, making her fly, some boyfriend. Naruto winced at the tone. He decided to not aggravate his girlfriend further and smiled at Piper. Did you enjoy the ride, Dove? Now he's just playing with me, Piper pouted with crossed arms. Your dad told me who my mother is, Piper replied before smiling at Zephyr but I did have fun. He's a very good ride and a pretty awesome horse. Poseidon smiled at his creation, a prideful look on his face. Zephyr turned to Naruto, transmitting his thoughts freely to his master, I like this girl master. May I give her a gift? See, Piper is so awesome all the ponies want to give her stuff, Leo snickered as the girl pushed him. There was some flowery girly joke in there, and she did not like it. You don't need my permission, Naruto replied with a smile. Grinning at the girl, he said, hold out your hand. Zephyr has a gift for you. Piper furrowed her brow in confusion but did as Naruto said, extending her right hand. Then suddenly the space above her hand burst into flame, forging a curved blade about seven inches in length, the handle just two inches long. It was a beautifully golden blade with a Greek sun engraved on either side. Piper held the blade in her hand, running the other over the engraved symbol. Well, seems Piper's equipped, Annabeth said, wondering if she was going to get Helen's dagger as well. Well it's almost official now, Naruto said, gaining her attention, all that's left is the claiming ceremony at Camp Half-Blood. And she will love it, the love goddess, no I won't, Piper said in a stubborn tone. I thought you looked nice. Jason told her in a kind tone, getting the girl to flush a bit with a smile on her face. The love goddess smirked, thank you golden boy. Namikaze Sama I must insist we take the intruders in for questioning, a masked warrior said, getting Naruto to look at him. Oh snap, no he didn't. Apollo sung out, do you remember what happened to Al when he tried to apprehend me? Naruto inquired, he he, Ares chuckled out, he liked his nephew very violent when he wanted to be. The warrior nodded his head, prompting Naruto to narrow his gaze into a glare as he continued, then you would do best to leave them be. If you so much as look at them wrong, I will put you down. Understand. So protective, Aphrodite smiled to Talia, who had a stoic face. She wasn't going to give the love goddess something to use on her, besides she was growing a good deal of skin from all this teasing. The warriors stiffened at the threat before vanishing in an explosions of smoke. Naruto exhaled in relief and patted the concerned spirit on the head, I'm alright. Thank you Zephyr, you may leave. Cannot leave master, not again. May I stay, master? Pleaded the fiery horse as it nudged Naruto's hand. The blonde demigod's whiskered cheeks pulled back into a grin and he affectionately rubbed the horse spirit on the head. Naruto began the man that stood behind him. 
Naruto turned to the man, his hand not leaving Zephyr's head as he did, prompting him to continue, who, who are they? Who is the man, behind the mask? Apollo said in a mysterious tone. Lame, Artemis chimed, getting her brother to deflate. She smiled, yep, best pastime ever. Chapter End